Hey guys, what's up everyone? Welcome back to a new video. This video has been requested for a long time. A lot of you guys asked me to provide a video on how to install OpenVAST on Kali Linux and today we finally get around to do that. Now OpenVAST is a open source vulnerability scanner. You probably have heard of tools like Nessus and stuff like this. While those tools are rich in features and uh, very good, they are also very, very expensive and most of us who are working as freelancers or as bug hunters are not willing or can't afford to pay the premium price for such tools. And that's where OpenVAS comes in. Now I've been using OpenVAS in the past. It's a great tool. It uh, actually works really well. And um, even I know some people who are using tools like Nessus and stuff, they are still using OpenVAS to just get a different scan result because as we all know, you can find different things if you use Burp Suite and um, OWASP Zap, for example. Those results always vary. So there's always a small chance that you find something on one tool that doesn't show up on the other. So even if you use tools like Nessus, it definitely makes sense to give tools like OpenVAS a look too. All right, with that out of the way, let's dive right in. As you guys know by now, we always provide a written piece of content to our videos. This is no different. So if you want to pull that article up uh, on seosec.com and then you just click on the search bar here and you search for OpenVAS or you just click in the link in the video description, I will leave it there as well for you guys. But if you pull that article up, you have the whole syntax here that we are going to use throughout this video. And I will make sure to follow the instructions step by step as they are in the article. So you can uh, just copy and paste this and follow through and I really recommend you to pull that up. Uh, there is always a written article on all of our videos so that you have it uh, easier to copy and paste syntax and don't need to type everything. So once you have that pulled up, we can jump into the installation. All right, guys, so the first thing I usually like to do uh, when installing something new, I want to make sure that my system is up to date. So I click on the terminal here to open up the terminal. Then I make that a lot bigger so you guys can actually read something. And then I do sudo apt update and the double end sign and sudo apt upgrade minus y to accept the upgrade. Now, you don't need to do the upgrade part. I just usually like to do that before I install something new. I don't know why, it's just a habit. I always like to keep my system up to date. Of course, you can skip that and you can just run sudo apt update and that is enough for that. So then you enter your sudo password and I just quickly let that to update here. And by the way, guys, if you need some additional help with Kali Linux, in the article, there's always this Kali Linux wiki box where you can open up all of our Kali Linux related articles here if you need some specific information. Okay, that already finished. And then we can move on to the next step, which is installing OpenVAS. So to install OpenVAS on Kali Linux, we can just simply type sudo apt install and then open VAS. Now, you have to accept with yes or you just do a minus y at the end of the command and you can see that it's downloading 500 megabytes so openvas is quite a larger piece of software um, but that shouldn't take too long the part that then actually takes quite a while is the installation part when we run the setup now the article was just recently updated because they have changed the complete setup uh, process of openvas so i needed to go ahead and update this article and if you're still used to the old uh, installation routine of openvas that has since changed all right let's uh, let that finish here okay this took about two minutes to download and now we can go ahead and install or set up openvas and to do that we need to run the command sudo then gvm minus setup and once we hit that it's starting up postgresql and uh, we get already the first error here and gladly a user pointed that error out and if you run into any kind of errors usually the users on our blog are really really nice and uh, if you run into any kind of issue i always recommend you to scroll down to the bottom and here uh, we see the error we got a postgres sql error on g4m g4m setup and there's also a solution here. So if you scroll down, you find a solution and we are going to implement that fix right here in this video because this is what everybody will run into when following this video. So always make sure to check the comment section down below as well. 
All right, guys, so while I was recording this video, it actually turned out there are two different versions of this issue, depending on which kind of version of PostgreSQL you have installed on your system. If you followed along so far and you have updated and upgraded your system, it's likely that you are also on version 14 and 15 of PostgreSQL like me. And if you look at the solution from Tom here, he probably didn't upgrade and update his system fully. And he has the error message here that uh, the default PostgreSQL version 13 and 14 uh, in here and that uh, requires probably a different solution than the one that I have found now. So um, in case you have 13 and 14 installed you can try to follow this solution and just make sure that the ports are in fact different and uh, if you're on the latest version like I am then you can uh, try the solution that I'm going to show you now that actually turns out to be working. Now you can check uh, what kind of PostgreSQL versions you have on your system by just doing an ls into the etc and PostgreSQL uh, with one forward slash PostgreSQL uh, folder and if you do an ls here then uh, you see that I have only 15 because I already went ahead and deactivated the version 14 here. So now I have only 15. So you have to check if you have 13 and 14 or 14 and 15. If you have 14 and 15 here, written here, then you have to follow my solution. So the solution that I found was I do sudo system ctl uh, stop postgresql at 14 minus main. And then I do sudo user uh, forward slash bin, then pg underscore drop cluster minus minus is top 14 main and uh, I did this already so it shows it does not exist but it did in fact remove it when I was running the command uh, the first time and it solved the issue. So you can see this uh, can be a little bit complicated and frustrating to install OpenVAS hence I'm making this video for you guys to make sure you can get that sorted. And um, okay so we have that sorted out and everybody should be on the same page again. And once we are there and we have everything in place, we can then finally go ahead and do sudo gvm uh, minus setup. And this time it should be actually working. And um, this is going to download probably 1.2, 1.5 gigabytes of data. And this usually takes very, very long. It took up to an hour at some times for me. Um, so we just gonna go back and actually if I <laughs> read the article it took about two hours for me to finish was when I last updated this tutorial. Um, so I'm just gonna let it finish in the background and continue recording once that's done. So take some time, go for a walk or whatever and then check back once that's finished. Okay guys this took about an hour to finish so I actually just went to the gym and came back and uh, now it is finished. So one important thing here um, there is your password for the admin user for the initial login is written right here. So you have to copy that for later use once uh, we log into the user interface. Um, but don't worry if you missed that out of some reason then there is a command that you can run to uh, reset that password which is uh, written in the written article. So you can pull that up if you need to uh, reset your admin password. Nevertheless I'm gonna copy that real quick from here. And we copy that and then to see if everything went smoothly we can run a quick sudo gvm check setup and uh, this will then check if everything was properly installed and updated uh, since we just did that i would assume that everything should be fine uh, it's checking for the services if that are if that is running and um, once that is done let's see starting gvmd services seems like that was not running uh, let's just wait for that to finish i think step seven is the latest or the last step checking if all the services are good to go okay that just went through uh, we are all good to go in case uh, the service did not start for you you can start it manually manually by doing sudo gvm minus start and uh, we can see that it's already running because we did the check setup thing that uh, also starts the service up. Now we can open up a web browser and uh, we can go to https colon and forward slash forward slash localhost and I think the default port is 9392 should be it. Yes and we get a warning we need to add an exception here so we click on advanced scroll down a bit accept the risk and continue 
that's normal because it's not a secured HTTPS session, but since you are locally working on your machine, it's fine. And then we put an admin and we put the default password that was given to us uh, just a second ago. And I'm not going to save that because I'm going to change it in a sec. So um, we are logged in. The OpenBus installation thereby is completed successfully and uh, we can now go ahead and use OpenBus. Since this is only an installation guide, I'm not going to go through showing you how OpenBus works. That will be the material for a different video. And I will leave some resources for you guys in the description as well. But one thing I want to do is I want to go to administration and to users. And of course, we're going to change that default password so that you guys are all set up and ready to go. So we click on the admin user. And somewhere we should find uh, the edit button. I'm not sure. Oh, okay, I see. They changed the setting, so this is actually grayed out. It's denied, so we need to go to our user symbol up here and then go to My Settings. And I'm sure we can change the password in here somewhere. It's not all that easy. Sometimes there is the Edit button up here. And then we enter the old password, which is the very long one, and then we do a new one. Make sure that's correct. Click on Save. And then we have the password updated. And that's about it. You can run a quick scan if you go to scan and then, or scans and then tasks. And then you can go ahead and create a new scan by, uh, I recommend you if you're using it the first time to click on this little whiz icon here. And it's so small. I hope I can make it bigger. There we go. And you can click on this little task wizard thing here and just click on it and then uh, start a manual scan on a certain IP address or IP range. Okay, guys, that's it for this video. This was how to install OpenVAS on Kali Linux. I think we covered everything there is to cover. If you have any additional questions, leave them in the comments below. And if you also want a video on how to use um, OpenVAS, then let me also know in the comments below. And I hope to see you back in the next video. Until then.